Good evening. It's Thursday. It's the 7th of July. It's a very special HHV The Judge because I am at Newmarket tomorrow. So we are going to look at the Group 1 July Cup today, tonight even, uh, and go through it and get you some early value, hopefully, for the big, big Group 1, the big race of the week. What a couple of days we've got coming, Judge. We've got Newmarket, we've got York, We've got well, just great races coming at you. Mark, you tell me, mate. Brilliant, absolutely well, brilliant. The July Cup, Judge, one of the great Group One sprints. It really is. It's the showpiece yeah. of a three-day meeting. It's on Saturday afternoon. It tends to be where the three-year-old sprinters take on their elders for the first time, and that's what's happening here. And I think really that the, the race not revolves around because it's a very competitive race, but yeah. um, certainly it's almost like are you a player or a layer? Uh, we've got the favourite, Perfect Power. Now, he was a very, very uh, impressive two-year-old for Richard Fahey. He uh, has recently won the Commonwealth Cup, the, yeah. the, the sort of three-year-old championship sprint, really, at Royal Ascot. He comes here on a real roll. He is the 12 to 5 favourite uh, for this race. You can get bigger on the exchanges. You can get about 11 to 4, 3 to 1. But he's a reasonably strong favourite, and it's very hard to uh, to say why he wouldn't be favourite. So could could the July Cup be going back to Moulton with perfect power, Judge? I think it could, mate. I'm going to be honest, like you say, it's actually kind of revolves around two form lines, doesn't it? It revolves around the Commonwealth Cup, which I believe four of them are running, or mm. the Golden Jubilee, which I think really the rest of the field are running. So you've either got, yeah. you've pretty much either got two ways of swaying. Um, I've got to be honest, there's not, there's not much to, you know, not like about this horse. I think pretty much everything meets the, you know, meets the mark, if you like. It's, um, it's a course winner. Um, he's, done, he's done the distance, come here on the back of a win. The only defeat was in the Guineas. Um, I, I can't fault it. Be honest with you, it's, it's very. I think I've either got two ways of playing: go win only this selection, or each way one other. And that's kind yeah. of the way I'm looking. To be fair, it's funny, you know. A lot of the molten lots say that Perfect Power is not a flashy worker at all. And if you look at his horse, uh, his horses. If you look at his races, he yeah. just gets the dog the job. I will I learn how to speak tonight. He gets, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy for you to say, yeah. He gets the job done. And at the end of the day, that's what counts, isn't it? At Ascot, he got it over the line. He did the business. He yeah. is just one of those horses with a real exceptional desire to not get beat. And they are uh, very, very exciting horses to be around. He's never going to be a sort of public horse who wins after tracking and cruises into contention, is he? He's a kind of like street yeah, fight. He's not, he's not but I've got to be honest, from the from the bookmaking point of view, I think we've done our done our cobblers on that at um, one of yeah. our worst results um, on the day. I think, funny enough, he's I think because of the way he keeps winning, he, the public do like him, but not necessarily yeah. the way he wins. If you see what I mean, yeah. he's, he's, he's I think he'll be, with the punters. Yeah, I think he'll be well back Friday night going into Saturday. Yeah. I could see a lot of the big um tipsters and the newspaper guys putting this horse up as a banker for saturday and i do think if you want to bet him 11 to 4 i can't see him being 11 to 4 on the day judge i could see him going off 9 to 4 2 to 1 i really could i agree yeah yeah i think that's about right yeah yeah i mean so I'd like, you... so I could, there's, there's not nothing it's nothing not to like if you like so no, he's got nothing to hide, has he? He's got a very high rating. He's clocked some very high top speeds. He's won at the track. You know, he's a good trainer. Uh, the jockey's not too bad either. The French guy, I believe, uh, he's had a few yeah, winners. He's, he's been nice to have the old winner even there of a group one, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, folks. So it's, it's not. It's just stating the bleeding obvious, but he's going to be is. a tough favourite yeah. to beat. Perfect power. We then come to a fascinating contender, Artorius. The Australian horse, and he sits here at second favourite, four to one. Now, Australian horses again have done the business at Ascot. Uh, it's a little bit like the Wesley Wards. I always think we, the American horse, we talk about them when they win, uh, but we don't mention the fact that they do come over here loads of times and not win as well. Yeah, you know, there were a lot of Wesley Ward horses that are still running at Royal Ascot, and there are a lot of Australian horses that flop. 
So we've got to put it into context. But, you know, let's have a little talk about this uh, Artorius. I mean, he um, he was he third was in the Platinum in, in the Jubilee. Yeah, and he was I unlucky. Think, yeah, he think was unlucky. Just, he I think he'd, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if he'd have had a clear run, I, it's very difficult when you start saying he'd had a clear run, he'd have won and all yeah. that. I'm always wary of saying that. But you've got to I say... Think he'd, have been he'd have been creative force if he'd have got a clear... I think it's yeah. a key moment of the race. Yeah. I can't actually blame Spence for it. I mean, in the, the day, the horse has got to be ridden like this. You know, yeah. you know like... And, you know, you're on about sort of Australian sprinters. I, I must confess, I'd rather back an Australian sprinter than a Wesley Wardle to, over the top of the two. Yeah. But um, yeah. I just don't think this tracker suit, do you, Sark? I think a nice stiff tracker at Ascot, I just can see this getting a bit out of pace and then running on, possibly getting sort of full third round that sort of place. Here. Think, it's not for yeah. me the price. I'd much rather no. we were perfect power out the two of them. Yeah, I think that you're right. I think his style of running may be suited to an Ascot Champions Day style sprint, something yeah. like that, where he almost wears them down. I think on Saturday, it's going to be a speed burn-up. And yeah. if today's anything to go by, the horses are not stopping, are they? Um, no. And I think he might be too far back. I think four to one is very, very skinny. Think, very yeah. skinny. I yeah. think that's allowing for the fact he was a bit unlucky, rather than... The other way yeah. around, you know? Yeah, so I want to be against him. Um, we then look at the Godolphin pair who are Creative Force and Naval Crown. Now, the boys in blue are banging in winners at Newmarket, left, right, and up the centre, aren't they? They've had a good day today. Um, creative Force is the, is the shorter price of the two. Now, ironically, I mean, we were talking before, Judge, about what my selection was going to be. And it's, I'll be honest, it's Naval Crown. I think at six to one, uh, he's an absolute knock in each way bet with three places here. But give me your thoughts there. The, the, the boys in blue, Creative Force, five to one, Naval Crown, six to one. Well, you've got, I think he potentially could have either great draw or rubbish draw, but he's, I feel like the fact he's near a rail, like he was. Um, in the Golden Jubilee, if you remember, he basically he got this side and he won this side of the track by miles. Um, he's, I couldn't put you off. I mean, he, I think I think the next one home on this side of the track came about 14th, and yeah. yet in, in the Woking, and they all come this side. And so, yeah. I, I think that that was let's be honest, it's also career best, wasn't it? It's sort of not to say come out of the blue, but it was an improved performance by quite a considerable way. Yeah. I think the other one is possibly the more bang solid out of the two. Uh, you know, the, it's more likely to be second, third, you know. And I kind of, be honest with you, I was looking at the um, the way to play this race. I was either going to go win only perfect power. And if I could get six to one, I'd go each way creative force. Because I think the two of them, I, I do think either out, they come out, the winner will come out of these three, if you like. Either the favourite yeah. or the two we're talking about here. I'm not yeah. too keen on quite a lot of the others, if I'm honest. No, I think it's a uh, funny should say that I, I think it's a race unusually that lacks depth. Yes. Um, so yeah, I would be concentrating on you know, top of the old boys that turn up every year that seem to hit the frame. Is that what they They're Kevin not here, Ryan? are they? Oh, They're not here. Big prices. Oh, it's very, oh, very man. strange. Those yeah. those top handicappers who have a crack at this are not doing it this year. Yeah, probably a good year to do it, really, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. It's very, very odd. Um, so yeah, there you go. Creative force for the judge. Naval crown for me. I think I yeah. think that horse has got a real uh it seems to be one of the few here who's progressive. I agree. Um, yeah. yeah. And that makes it an exciting proposition to me at around six to one. And I think, I think the there's a real... bit... sorry, I was gonna let you finish. No, there's a real feeling in Godolphin that Naval Crown could be one of those sleeper group one horses that yeah. they thought was a good horse, blah, 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 and yeah. could just come through to... There's always one in the top stable that surprises them and ends up being a top group one performer that wasn't... You know, if you spoke to Charlie Appleby in April, I'm sure he wasn't obsessing about this horse. He had different ones to be thinking about, like Garibas. But I think Naval Crown has surprised them with the quality yeah. of the work it's doing. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if it wins this. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we've said about the bigger prices, so we won't go through every other horse. But, you know, we've got horses, just to mention a few. Um, 
A horse who maybe, if it was softer ground, would have interested alcohol free at 20 to 1. I think I don't think it's going to get that soft ground, is it, Judge? No, it's funny as you say, because I'm nearly always tipping up horse with alcohol in the name. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I got, yeah, this, this is a funny one, mate, because it, it didn't get a clear run in, in, the, in the Gold Jubilee. Obviously, she, she's a proven group one horse over a mile. Yeah, she is, yeah. Um, if they went too hard and they did come back, you could see her running on, and the twenty to one, she's one of the more likely ones, I think. But now you mentioned her, she was one of the. I can't. I've had a look through the other. I suppose the other funny one at a big price is the Japanese horse, isn't it? Because let's be honest, you know, <laughs> Japanese sprinting wouldn't be one of my um, strongest um, forays, if you like. A much more a sprint handicap in this country. Oh, but, I um, thought you had your own Japanese sprinting. Oh, no, I haven't, I haven't got. No, you, the old judges haven't that? got that far onto the bench yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You, if you if you saw a Jap Japanese horse win this, you go, well, where's that come from? But their horses yeah. have been really coming out of the woodwork, haven't they, the last 18 yeah. months, two years? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if, no. if you're going to have what a name, Tell us the name of the horse, oh, Judge. Oh, sorry, would it help, would it? King Hermes. Sorry, mate. King Hermes. Yeah, yeah, always helps, mate. Always Yeah, helps. I stitched you up a bit there. Sorry, yeah. yeah Number it's 12. all right. I'll, yeah, I mean, uh, Twilight Jet at 22s. I've been looking at a few previews of people have been sort of saying if there's an each way squee course to bustle up the front three, Twilight Jet. I think I'd want yeah, bigger yeah. than 22s. I've got to be honest. It was well, it was well backed in the Commonwealth Cup. And it, it could already, it's already been beaten by perfect power, I think, two times before that. I yeah, it, I don't uh, see how he's going to overturn that form line. I can't, line. I can't I really see how, don't. how it can be perfect power for me. Um, and obviously, tw um, obviously, what is the other one? Flaming Rib didn't get beaten far, possibly in the, uh, the wrong part of the track. Cadamento yeah. is just Cadamento, really, in terms of um, he, he, does, he tries to chuck it away. It was my each way play, actually, in the, in the, um, oh, in the, the Commonwealth Cup at a massive price at 50. He's hit the frame at. 40 to 1, I think it was. But, yeah, um, he did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're right. He raised he's that head in the air, didn't he? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's, he's even sacked all his way across the course. Um, yeah. But I, I would want double that and I might be considering it. Do you know what I mean? But 25, not, no, not for me. I'm, you know, once bitten, twice shy, if you like. Yeah, I think we've got to be honest, folks. You know that we do this show and we try and find big price winners, we try and yeah. find angles. But if there aren't angles there and we feel it's at the top of the market, I think it's sort of beholden uh, yeah. of us to, to state that. And it's not stating the bleeding obvious, whatever, but I think this is going to go to the uh, the first four in the betting. Well, actually, I'm against, I'm going to lay Artorias at four. Yeah. So I'll have that all day. I think it'll be too far back. I think yeah. this is going to be either perfect power or the two Godolphins. I so agree. I'm going to pay the biggest price, Naval Crown. Uh, I'm not going to try and be and I've got to be honest, the way that I play, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go each way creative force cause, yeah, just because, yeah, so you know, we're not putting anyone off the favourite. No. Uh, I think this is going to go to form. Don't be clever if there isn't an angle to be clever in. in yeah, in I think sometimes you've got to take your medicine, haven't you, when you're studying a race? Yeah, um, and if I can get six to one on Naval Crown and that wins, I am going to be one happy no, it, sailor. It, 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 even if it comes third or fourth, I bet there'd be most bookies going four places in a race like this, I should think. Uh, I think they might emerge, yeah. yeah. You don't know. It's it's uh, it's not a gr uh, We've seen much bigger fields for this race. I do think yeah. it's an exciting race, and I do think yeah. Perfect Power might be one of those underrated Group 1 horses who goes on and win another, another three or four yeah. over the next couple of years. Yeah, and I mean, gets much higher rated. So, yeah, you know, he's 11 to 4 in the exchanges. Artorius, we're against. The judge is going to create his force for the boys in blue. I'm going naval crown. That's five to one, six to one. You could back them both uh, and hopefully get them both safe for one win. Yeah, exactly. So there you go, folks. That's our July Cup preview. We're not being flashy. We're going to the top end of the market. Creative force for the judge, naval crown for me. I'm off to new market tomorrow, judge. I will oh, be back on Saturday morning. Uh, dark glasses on if it, you know I, it won't well, be that I'm over. Over. it won't be that i'm over it may be that the hay fever has struck i have to oh, wear that yes. yeah. i've got it's a little bit of a really cough the hay fever could be particularly bad exactly <laughs> so please don't write in right judge 
Uh, I hope you have a great few days, mate. It's going to be very exciting. Anybody who's going to Newmarket, uh, enjoy. Anybody who's going to York, enjoy. These are great midsummer meetings. Yeah. We'll be back next week when we'll look at two more races. But it's a July Cup preview. We're going yeah, for the top of the market. I'll be putting up a couple of selections as well tomorrow, probably. For the yeah, races. and look out. I think, I think I might have to say goodbye for us, I think, because the mic's gone. So, goodbye, be lucky all, and we'll say... <laughs>